Today I'm building B2 Emo. For this build, I used craft foam, floor mat foam, half cylinder foam, coffee foam, super glue, hot glue, sanding implements, safety gear, sharpening stone, scissors, razor pens, and a box cutter. We're gonna start with the interior. Since this is on the inside and it doesn't matter what this looks like, I'll be using my most useless foam, which is wood pattern on one side, beige on the other. I don't know what project this was supposed to be for. I think somebody just gave this to me. But hey, you know, it's still good for internal supports. Guess this drawer is gonna be wood on the inside and red on the outside. It's like a reverse station wagon. That joke was for 80s kids. I traced the carcass of a robot vacuum cleaner onto the base so that I'd be sure it'd fit. Next, I cut strips of red foam. Well, more like bands of red foam. Oh, what is that, 10 centimeters? It really, the measurements really don't matter on this, which will form the lobster shell segments of the exterior. When possible, I like to use the same color foam as the final outcome, save so much time on paint. Although, of course, you can't do the ultra shiny version from the flashback scene, but that's not important for my purposes. I cut notches in the back of the foam to create the corners of the octagon using an angle cutter. The blades on this tool are just such a pain to sharpen, but it's well worth it. And I mean, it's, it's like three minutes. It takes three minutes. Highly recommend getting an angle cutter. This tool is so useful. That sounded for I'm being real here. Just getting the fake YouTuber cadences down. It's just, uh, ugh, I can't do it. I spent all my enthusiasm on the build and it's done. Then I hot glued the outer red piece to the inner support piece. I closed up the ends with super glue and I sliced off the excess with a box cutter. Then I cleaned up the edge with a rotary tool. Now that it's glued together, I don't need the added strength of the interior provided by the circle, so I cut it out. The bottom of B2 is beveled, so I had to cut those pieces at a slanted angle. I glued them onto the bottom one by one, holding them in place with metal blocks. Again, I had to saw off the excess. That's, that's gonna happen a lot over the course of this build. It's sort of the drawback of figuring things out in real time rather than planning it out in a slicing software as you would with uh, 3D printer, but I find foam to be a, a very forgiving medium. So if I if I have to make changes, it's like whatever. I lost five minutes as opposed to 55. And again, I had to saw off the excess. You get a cleaner cut if you can get through the entire piece in one slicing motion, just like drag across the entire blade of the box cutter rather than a sawing motion. So just keep that in mind. Once I had completed the bevel all the way around, I had the details on the front. I started with a two millimeter foam panel, then I made the vent out of bevel offcuts. You can buy these bevels and they're a little bit more uniform and machined, but you can also just save the offcuts of your beveled cut and save some money, which is very helpful when you're on a YouTube budget. First, I made the frame by connecting the bevels with super glue. Then I attached it to the outer shell. And then I added more bevels in a step ladder configuration inside of the frame to simulate vent baffles. I also add a little detail at the top. Then I masked the edges to prepare for painting using masking tape. It's almost like that's what it's for. I also gave it a quick blast of heat with the heat gun to seal up the foam, hopefully decreasing the number of paint layers that I'll have to do, but we'll see. I had to do many layers in order to get a good solid glossy finish. Left a box fan on in between those just to speed up the dry time. When they dried, I covered it in silver rub and buff metallic finish and then removed the tape. Then I made the middle segments of the body the same way as the base segment, except the top one, well, the one below the head is just a little bit shorter. This time I added some surface detail by making a shallow cut, not all the way through, and heating the foam in order to get the line to open up. See that? Now it looks like there's a panel in there. The top segment has the most detail. It has a notch in the front and the back. It's, a, it's sort of a cutout so that his eyes, his vision doesn't get obscured by the shell. It also has open panels on the side with exposed electronics. I simulated those electronics with scrap pieces of four millimeter EVA craft foam. These are basically just equipment slots for now. I'll add the components later. I glued all the pieces together, but added foam brace panels on the inside for additional support. When these segments were done, I used one of them to extrapolate the shape of the top of the head before doing any more work on it. I used the angle cutter to cut a square in the middle of a sheet of foam. Then I cut the corners. Then I applied hot glue to the divots and weighted the whole thing down until it cooled which happens faster if the metal is contacting the hot glue, hence why I did this twice instead of all at once. Also, there was a blizzard at the time, and it's just it's like 55 in the shop, which is not, not really cold, but it 
means my glue gun has to work harder, you know? It's taking longer to melt the glue. Should get a new glue gun. Support me on Patreon so I can get a new glue gun. There's gotta be another one around here somewhere. Then I add triangles to fill in the corners. When they were all filled in, the whole assembly was stable enough that I could slice off the excess of the original piece. I would have done that sooner, but, but I wasn't sure how much I would need to cut away until all the corners were in there. Then I made the awning for the eye by heating up a curved piece of scrap foam, well, cur curved along two dimensions, and then I formed it over a rounded solid surface so that it was curved along three dimensions. After it cooled down a bit, I super glued it on. When the super glue had solidified, I cut out the interior with the box cutter. So that's about as much work as I can do with the box cutter. Now I'm gonna clean up all these edges with the rotary tool for right there and the belt sander for the outside. So I clean that up on the belt sander to reiterate myself, sand it. That's that's all the dialogue you need to know. That's what that step is. Just, just sand it. And got rid of the interior texture with the rotary tool. I wouldn't say that this is absolutely necessary because it's very difficult to see that texture because he's, he's like it he's at kneecap level his eye he sees the world from kneecap level so the camera's never gonna see it. the very edge is kind of visible and this is this is just my ocd brain just ah, i started with i gotta finish it you know now for the interior of the robot i cut the faceplate from more scrap foam way too enthusiastic too much energy take it down never this whole build is secretly an excuse for me to get rid of scrap foam well not so secret anymore. Loose lips sink ships. Oh, I'm using a metal ruler here so that I don't end up with little bits of ruler. Made that mistake earlier with a plastic ruler. And now it's in the trash on its way to murder a turtle. How could you say that? Because it's true. Once the piece was cut out, I glued it into the hat. It, it's a hat. I glued it into the hat. Why not? Anthropomorphize away. Next, I cut strips of regular EVA foam, heat formed it, rolled it up, and stuck it in a tube. When they cooled, I glued them together and then and glued them back into the space hat. Super glue gets surprisingly hot when you use it on foam. I know I've said it before, but I'll say it again because it's, it's actually kind of dangerous. Just keep your fingers away from the seams and don't look at it too close. And don't get burned. With the smoke, this fire. Then I use some patterns from my Stormtrooper helmet template to make the curved portion of the head. A lot of recurring shapes in Star Wars. It's it's all it's all the same stuff. It's all ovals and spheres. <gasps> That's where Mel Brooks had the idea for space balls. Oh, it's all coming together. Then I got half a bath bomb. I painted the interior black, and then I glued it in with hot glue. I also added the largest detail greebly using a leather hole punch. And that's it for the face greeblies. I don't want to hear any greebly grievances. Grievous. Because as returning subscribers know, I eat greeblies for breakfast. Guys, I used a lot of resin for this joke. I am getting my money's worth. Then I sliced a hole for the second lens and used a magnifier this time. I think this came out of a projector. I hid the jagged cut with a rounded bevel strip. Then I made the hologram projector from, oh jeez, I don't even know where these parts came from. I just grabbed them out of my lightsaber bin. One of my lightsaber bins. Keeping this place organized is an absolute nightmare. Rub and buff and glue. Those are the instructions. And that's how to make, oh wait, core. I forgot the core. I gotta build the core. Starring Hilary Swank. Who's the guy who played Frankenstein? Aaron Eckert. It was Aaron Eckert. Ah, oh, it's Harvey Dent. Why do I remember Frankenstein, but not Harvey Dent? What is going on? See, really what I'm doing here is just trying to fill dialogue because people hate the time lapse. And it just, it doesn't take that much time to say, glue the foam together. How many different ways can I say glue the foam together? So these are all just panels. They have angled edges. So I figured I'd save some time and use the angle cutter again. You can adjust it so that it cuts all the way through. Also, weight it down with all the machinist blocks that I own. No, there's some more, it's just they're really obnoxious to get to right now. Gotta do something about this hoarding. I am just, this bench is gonna collapse. Then I trace the lines down the length of the panels. And when heat form, this will simulate machine pattern, which I've already covered on the red pieces. See, I, I really don't think these videos need to be longer than four minutes. But a computer is making me talk more than I need to, Clue. I bet you Clue's the algorithm. I glue them all in place and then slid the red lobster sections over them. To fill in the gaps, I use the same heat form panel line technique to make rounded sections. The only thing that I did differently was add a slight curve to them. Oh, you know, I do want to point out here that the droid in the show, the center core is supposed to be a 
cylinder. I mean, I'm sure it is, but some of the shots really look CG, but they do that so that, you know, that they can rotate the cylinder on the inside and it like you see it, but you don't, and it adds a little bit more articulation and life to the whole thing and, and makes it more believable as a character because it's doing a lot of things all at once. Like there's so much movement you can't really follow it all as opposed to a thing that's being remote controlled off screen. You can see this in B2's first scene of the show. And you can do that out of foam. It's not very complicated. It's it's a barrel, you know? It's, it's like a tech version of the Harley mallet and add another servo motor to it. But that's a huge amount of work for a tiny bit of added motion that isn't gonna read on a video being watched on someone's phone. God, I hope people didn't watch Andor on their phones. That was just, oh, that'd be horrible. I shudder to think. I am so derailed. So I'm only gonna do the visible portions and it's gonna save so much time, so much foam. And these are the choices you gotta make based on your budget for a project. You know, if you have Andor money, make the things spin around and light up and shoot tasers at CGI warthogs. If you're on a YouTube budget, don't, don't get all bent out of shape. Just do what you can do. I glued those in one by one. One. See, again, that was a rant to cover up the lack of dialogue, because that step takes zero time to say. It took a little while to do each one because I'm relying on gravity and thermodynamics. In the meantime, I cut a top panel out of red foam for the head to rest on. Oh, uh, okay, so like a top panel of the third red segment, so that, that's, that's like its shoulders. Then I glued that into the octagonal segment, and lastly, I glued it on top of the torso. Torso? Yeah, sure, you betcha. I weighted that down to cool while waiting. I really just typed that. Waiting, like, for a bus, not waiting to, I guess, both. Can I deprogram the dad jokes part of my brain? Just crisper that out of me. While waiting, I added greeblies to the slots on the exposed panel, and also various lengths of wire. And that was it. Oh, uh, wait, no, it's not. I forgot the feet. I, I forgot the feet, everybody. We gotta do the feet, we're not done yet. So yeah, the feet, same deal, make them out of red foam. It's all just red foam. One of them's yellow. <sighs> nice. I do have to sand that. Any amount that you can slice off is gonna save you so much sanding. In fact, that's on the bottom, so you kind of don't even need to sand it. The details are two millimeter craft foam. Now do the exact same thing again, and then again, but mirror the details. And because Star Wars production designers hate me, the fourth foot is completely asymmetrical. That's very narcissistic, just assuming that they're doing that just to spite cosplayers. Although some decisions they definitely do to spite cosplayers. So I broke out the yellow foam. <sighs> You were not meant for this. You were supposed to be a diagnostic repair drone. How will John Crichton ever get home? If you don't get these jokes, then brush up on 90s television. I just, I don't have time to explain 1998 to 2002. Although what I will say is that Farscape is a perfect example of what happens when you give a bunch of nerds free reign to make a TV show and they go, we're gonna do all practical effects, no CGI, that's sacrilege. And they blow all the budget on puppet aliens being used e e in, an, in an open market scene once in the pilot. How much money did you waste on that? One shot you use that alien in. So then they end up having to shoot four seasons in Australia. I don't know, I think it kind of worked. I mean, if you, if you get shot through a wormhole and end up in another part of the universe, you'd expect everybody to have an accent, right? I'd buy that. Always with the tangent. So, cut and glue yellow foam. I think that covers it, right? That's all the steps right there in that one sentence. Great. Then add Roomba. One tablespoon. Cut with baking soda. And yes, I did need to use a Roomba. You can't just get away with a remote control car because B2 actually weighs a lot. Relatively. I mean, to me, it's light. To Like, I couldn't stand on a Roomba and it would still work. But a Roomba can haul over 14 pounds. I don't know why they designed it with those specific specifications. The dust collection tray is relatively tiny. By mass, that's some heavy dust. Who commissioned these things? A uranium factory? Well, or probably more likely that place that decommissions old nukes. <gasps> oh no! What have we done? Next, I took the showered components of my Vanquish mechanical foe and repurposed them as B2's drive mechanism. And that's how I built a mobile coffee table. Thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Or whatever. I mean, you know, hit the bell icon because you won't know when I posted.
if you haven't hit that bell icon. I would like to be able to adhere to a schedule, but when you gotta build something, then your schedule is determined by things that are completely out of your control, like weather natural disaster and wars apparently and it's easier to get around those things if i have a larger budget so if you enjoyed this and want to see more then maybe think about heading on over to the patreon page and joining all these nice people who make these videos possible these are the viewers like you that you always hear about. They provide the funding for these projects, which allow me to make them way more elaborate and articulate. Functional, I guess I would say. And I went so over budget on this project, guys. Oh my God, you don't even know. Help me, potential patrons. You're my only hope. That only works if you're Carrie Fisher. All right, happy crafting. See you later.